Hello friends, my name is Sanjay Singh. I am working as an RF engineer. Today I am going to discuss more about the RRC optimization, which is the part of accessibility KPI, or you can say the first step of the network optimization. So accessibility contains three parts: that one RRC phase, S1 signaling phase, and ERF phase. In this video, I will discuss only about the RRC phase. So after watching this video you can understand what are the reason for the rrc failures and how we can improve it what are the parameters can help us to improve the rrc kpi so first we have to understand what is the accessibility so accessibility is the ability of a user ability of a user to obtain a requested service from the system so if a UV requested for the some services uh, to the system and system will respond to the UV properly, it means accessibility is completed successfully. And what is the RRC? RRC is the radio resource control. In the call flow system, after the RAG procedure, second procedure comes the RRC phase. In the RRC phase, there are three things. First one is the RRC connection request, second is RRC connection setup and third one is the RRC setup, uh, RRC connection setup complete. So if any of them message will failure, that means RRC phase is not completed. In this picture, you can understand this is the UV and this is the E node B. Once UV send the RRC connection request, E node B have to response the RRC connection setup message, but sometimes E node B will not respond with, uh, with RRC connection setup message. However, just re responded with RRC reject message. So, what is the reason for the RRC reject message? We have to think about that. So, here may be the reason E node B will be the busy or it is very congested. It don't have any resources so that it can allow to new user. That may be the reason of RRC rejection. So let us understand how we can improve this RRC rejection. So if E node B is congested, then we have to reduce the congestion of the E node B. Let, let us understand how we can reduce the congestion. So there are three things. First one is the that parameter is the UV inactivity timer in the Nokia. It name is the inactivity timer and in Ericsson this parameter name is T inactivity timer. And this is the LN cell class parameter. So it defines the time period for the indication of UV inactivity in both downlink and uplink direction. It ranges one to six five five three five second we can change it in a step of one second so understand what is the inactivity timer so once we disconnected from the conversation or you can say from the call we are not completely disconnected from the network it means we are connected with the rrc connections through e node b and UV wait for some time and if in that time UV will not initiate any other call then it comes in the idle mode otherwise if it make any other call between that time period uh, directly goes to the connection setup it not again goes for the RRC connection setup so this is the time for the inactivity timer so suppose this is the 30 second so once we disconnected the call uv will not completely release through e node b it will connect it with the rrc till 30 second and after the 30 second it will reduce if it not make any other new call so if we reduce this 30 second to 10 second or 5 second then uv will release early from the e node b and e node b will free or you can say allow to new user if it is free so this way we can optimize the inactivity timer by reducing this if e node b is the busy 
and second thing is the physical optimization in physical optimization we can exclude the users who are on the boundary of the cells by down tilting so exclude the users then e node b resources will be free or if we don't have any options for the down tilt then in that case we have to return the parameter dlrs boost in the nokia and crs gain in the erection so this is the dlrs boost it is the ln cell fddmo class parameter if we reduce it in the negative form negative value then it will reduce the reference signal or you can say it is de boost and we can exclude the use some users so e node b will be free again these are the ranges and these are the steps for the dlrs boost and same are for the crs gain as well also we can do the load balancing mobility load balancing if e node b is the busy we can uh, shift the user to the nearby the side or in the different carrier or different uh, band from the same side so this way we, uh, we can reduce the user so that node b will be free in the mobility the load balancing there are so many parameters i will discuss about all the mobility parameter in the mobility video in this video i just cover uh, one parameter that name is a3 offset so if we reduce the a3 offset value that is the offset for the a3 event you will move very fast to the neighbor side or give the handover this way you can understand so these are the parameter which you have to optimize in the case of the e node b congestion next thing you can understand uh, ue send the rrc connection request e node b responds respond the rrc connection setup but maybe the chance rrc connection setup will not complete in the next step sometimes uv fail to decode rrc connection setup message so it will never send the rrc connection setup complete message to e node b so due to this region rrc will not completed rrc phase will not complete interference on the cell sometimes cell have a huge interference and in this case e node b cannot receive the message whatever he receive from the uv so at that time rrc setup will fail over and third thing is that sometimes e node b cannot decode the message whatever it receive from the uv why it happen so let us understand this thing suppose uv is in the boundary of the cell and it have very low coverage so in this case when he send the rrc connections request it was around the 7 byte you can say a smaller number of radio bearer is required power per carrier but when it send rrc connection setup complete message it is in the same location or you can say it is in the boundary location where coverage is very poor so when it send the rrc connection setup complete message that is greater than 7 byte it may be 8 byte or it may be 100 byte as well it because of the it sending the attach request as well in this rrc connection setup complete message it have the attach request due to this region this size will be bigger so for the bigger size it need the more resources so more resources will be message will be fragmented and it will send to the e node b so average power per carrier will be reduced leading to higher probability that the message may not be decoded at the e node b so due to big message it properly reaching to the e node b and if it reach then e node b cannot decode it so due to the region it failures so these are the steps which comes rrc setup failure due to the no response so to overcome this problem what we have to do we have to again here do the physical optimization we can exclude the users who are in the cell boundary cells so we can exclude that cells by changing the down tilt or by changing the dlrs boost or crs gain parameters if that will not help 
then there are some timers T300, T301 and T302 which value we can retune to improve this KPI. So let us understand one by one. So first is timer T300. Let us understand what is T300. So T300 will start when UV send the RRC connection request to E node B and it end once UV receive RRC connection setup or reject message from the E node B. So this this is the time that that called the T300. So if this timer is very small, then maybe the chance UV peg under the RRC connection fail easily. But if this timer is big, then till that time you will wait for the message and if it will not receive from the E node B, then it peg under the failures. So in your network you have to check and if you found if it is the 100 millisecond T300, you can go for the 400 millisecond or 600 millisecond accordingly. So you will have the more time frame to receive the RRC connection setup message. Uh, see this parameter uh, is belongs to the MO class of the SIB MO class and uh, if LNBTS parameter act context presumption is activated for your uh, site then it is recommended you have to keep T300 value is 600 millisecond and if both LNBTS act context presumption and LN, LNBTS act set backhaul are activated then minimum value is uh, minimum value should be 1500 millisecond for T300. So you have to before changing that T300 value you have to check these parameter at the LNBTS level. And next one is the timer T301. So you already understand T300 that is between the RRC connection setup and RRC connection reject are setup. So once RRC connection reject happen, then UV start sending RRC connection re-establishment request. So once UV start sending RRC connection re-establishment request, timer 301 started and it will end till UV receive RRC connection re-establishment setup or reject message. So it will work same way like timer 300. If we increase this timer value, then UV wait till that time period after that it become failures or you can say it peg under the failures and next one is the timer 302 so what is the timer 302 here t300 between the rrc connection request and rrc connection reject so if rrc connection has been rejected then it will start the rrc connection re-establishment request but after how many second UV send the RRC connection re-establishment request that time period between the RRC rejection and uh, new RRC connection re-establishment between that time period timer called the T302. So how it work? Uh, this is the LN cell parameter and this range is 1000 to 16000 millisecond and uh, we can change it in a step of 1000 millisecond so in the description you can understand e node we send this parameter to the uv in the message rrc rejection so that uv will wait till that time period and after that it will establish new rrc connection reestablishment request so increasing t302 will increase the interval between such rrc connection request and therefore reduce the signaling load on the e node b here you understand if uv send immediately the request of the re-establishment to the e node b then it will busy but if it wait for some time and maybe the chance at that time e node b will free then it can allow to this users so these are the things for the lt olt rrc optimization in last video i discuss lte olte dcr optimization if you haven't watched it then please go through that video i will drop the video link in this description box if you like this video 
प्लीज शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब द चैनल थैंक यू वेरी मच